Hey, it's Tom from Texas and it's time for another floppy deep dive. And thank you for stopping by and joining me here on our little retro channel. If you like retro computers and you like retro gaming, this is the channel for you. Today we're going to continue in the series of Retro Dealer Dud. Yep, I picked up a couple more items to add to my retro collection. One of them very rare that not a lot of people have, but I wanted it since the late 80s when I ran my BBS. So I was really excited to get it. And then another one, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it, but it truly turned out to be a great blessing. So I'll share the whole story with you guys. So let's check out these items. I'm going to tell you exactly how the turn of events happened. And then at the end, I'm going to tell you exactly how much I paid for it and you tell me, was it a retro deal or dud? So this video is sponsored by PCBWay. So why do I have PCBWay sponsor me? Because they just do a great job. The PCB manufacturing and assembly is awesome. They also have good quality assurance for their boards. They have speed. They're very quick on the turnaround time. Give you great service, exclusive customer support, and solve problems quickly. They have a great community, which I love. All these cool projects out there. So for anyone at any skill level can do these things. And they actually listen to feedback. And that's what I like about PCBWay. So if you haven't checked them out yet, go shop PCBWay.com. So this deal all started with this post on OfferUp. It was a 1581 that she posted out there and it was in a box and it looked really new and it looked in good shape. So I inquired about it to her to see what she had and if she had anything else. Now I already have a 1581, but I don't have one in a box and I don't have it looking quite as new as she did on this one. So I thought if I could get a good deal on it, you know, I'd be happy to see what I can find out. Now, I know these go rather high. Um, so I was trying to get the best deal that I could get because that's all part of the bargaining and trying to work in on here. So I started off here and then I asked her, did she have anything else? And she said, yes. She said her this was from her grandfather. Her grandfather had all this computer and he used it in his business. And so she sent me a bunch of pictures and I'll show you these other pictures pictures that she sent me and you get an idea of the feel of what she had and then how this whole deal kind of progressed from there. So she sent me this picture of the other things that she had. She had a Commodore 128, a Commodore 64C. She had the Super Disk Drive SD2, that monitor up over there in the corner, some printers and 1571s. And like she said, it was all used for business. She also sent me some pictures of business software and different things that he had. But the things that really caught my eye was the 128, the monitor, and of course the super disk drive there and the 1581 that I was initially interested in that's what I'm going to make the offer on so the offer I made her is if she would do a bundle deal I offered for the 128 the monitor the super drive in the 1581 drive I'd give her $550 for all of that if it was working. She thought about it for a little bit. And I think what she said with just the 1571 drive, she wanted 600 and with the 1581, it was going to be closer to 800. So I narrowed it all down. I already have a 128, a 1571 and a 1581. So what I really wanted was the super drive and the monitor. So this is the first item I picked up in my collection, Retro Dealer Dud, and it's the super disk drive, the MSD SD2. And I love this thing. This thing is a beast. And I always wanted one of these when I was a kid back in the 80s when I ran my BBS Temple of Syrinx because it would have allowed me to share more to people out there when they came and called up my BBS to download games from me. This would have allowed me to have more space. And I always saw them in magazines but I never ever saw one in person until now. And now I own one. Now it's more of a novelty than it is something that I'll probably use a lot. Um, but I definitely will test it to make sure it works. But they use these super disk drives for a lot of different things. And I'm gonna just turn this around here so you could see the back. So 
here's the back of it not much to it a couple plugs plug-in fuse switch and this thing like i said is a beast it weighs 14.4 pounds and it is heavy and i've started to research it a little bit but this thing is just cool so retro so fun i hope it works but we're going to hook it up to my commodore 128 and see if i can get this thing working so let's open this thing up and take a look inside it looks like it has three screws on each side that i'm going to have to take out so let's go ahead and take those three out and let's just open it up and look inside this i've never seen the insides before all right so let's go ahead and see how this comes off i believe in the front it slides up just like that in off and there's the pcb board that's inside so let's go ahead and look inside this Coming straight down. You got your two drives side by side. And you got your controller, your PCB board over here. But I wanted to open it up and just show you the guys the inside. This is looking from the back here straight ahead. But that's all there really is to this drive. So let's go ahead and get it put back together and then check out the other item that I picked up. So this is the other item I picked up. This Gold Star 1420 Plus was included in the deal that I made today along with my disk drive. And this was made in 1990. I wasn't really sure exactly what I was going to do with it. Uh, there's not really much to it. Let's go ahead and look around at the back of it. So here's the information on the Gold Star, like I said. It's a 1420 Plus. Manufactured October 1990 and that's all about there is to it. This is the cord coming out of it. It's your typical nine pin plug and I could hook this up to my Commodore 128 to do 80 column mode but I was really not really sure what I was going to do with this monitor to tell you the truth but it really turned into a blessing and I'll show you that here now. This was not the monitor I was expecting or that I thought I was going to be getting in the deal. If you remember what the monitor looked like, here's what it looked like. This is what I thought I was going to be getting, but when she opened up her car, I met her like in the parking lot of a Walmart. And when she opened up her car and showed me that other monitor, I was just like, that's not the one that I wanted. And she told me that's the only one that she had. So anyway, I settled with it. I didn't really throw a fuss. I'm sure I could figure out something to do with that monitor. So I took that monitor in the drive. So shortly after I picked up this Gold Star monitor and didn't know what I was going to do with it, I picked up myself a Tandy 1000 SX. And the beautiful thing about it is the Tandy 1000 SX needs a nine pin monitor. And I thought, perfect, that's exactly what I've got with this Gold Star. I haven't had a chance to even try it or test it. I wouldn't even know if it worked. So I went ahead, I plugged it all in, plugged it into the Tandy, turned the Tandy on, and it worked perfect. In fact, it has a text mode. If I need to switch over to text mode to see the little DOS so much easier. I tried it on other monitors, my 1702 and my 1902 and just different monitors to see how it looked, the Tandy, and it did not look well. Uh, plugging it directly doing composite was not the way to go. The nine pin was the way to go. And this Gold Star was such a blessing. And it put this whole system together much well and we are going to be looking at this tandy 1000 in a future episode we'll do another deal or dud i'll tell you exactly what i paid for it show you all about it i am still learning about it and i love it and i'm excited to share it to you in another video so that's the monitor that's the story and that's how everything worked there so let's jump back to the drive and let me show you if does that work i'm going to hook it up to my 128. so now we're going to test it out see if it works uh, try to load up something simple so I got it hooked up to my Commodore 128 and let's check it out so let's boot it up into and let's just see if we get a directory at least it's talking to my 128 
So we're getting a directory, I believe. Let's list it out here. Perfect, yes. Let's just load the first thing that's on here. So far, so good. And there you go, you got Defender. So I loaded up Defender just fine. Such a classic. So there you go guys, the drive's working. I'm not gonna test drive two at the moment because I'm just gonna keep it simple just to see that it was working and that it powers up. But I am gonna dive into it more and test this more. As you know or may not know, this drive was capable to run by itself People loved them at copy parties because you could copy disc after disc after disc, just switching it back and forth, back and forth. So they were very popular when it came to that. The price when it came out back in the day in 1983 was like $695. So that was a lot of money and the reason why I could not afford one when I was running a BBS. But I think it's so cool to add this nice little piece of history to my collection. It was something that I always wanted and so let's go ahead and get this video wrapped up so that's it guys that's the two items that I added to my collection something that I've been wanting for a long long time this rare disk drive and that monitor which turned out to be a blessing I offered her $200 for it she wanted just 200 for the drive alone but I felt like I needed a little bit more for that 200 so I asked her to throw in that monitor and when I got them both together I had to make that deal so now you tell me did I get a retro deal or a retro dud so I want to do a shout out to my patrons I want to shout out to Tony and Chris and John thank you guys so much for joining the patreon family I appreciate you it means so much to me and it just encourages me to keep creating these videos and that's exactly what I'm gonna do if you'd like to join the patreon family just go ahead and check it out you can check out this link here and I appreciate any of you now none of you are required to do I do this for free and I want you to check it out so please don't let that stop you if you got comments I'd love to hear for you I love my retro community that we're building here I love all your comments down below and interacting with you guys and it's just been a joy doing it so don't stop there guys there's a lot more videos to watch especially more retro dealer duds to check out if you don't want to watch those you could also see what's on that floppy the mini faces series the first series me versus me a lot of different things going on so check out those videos